question is, this is what we get to see finally. What is the answer to this rise pick? I mean, Baker's rise. The interesting thing is the rise no. and the reaction are both flexible. No way. Are they going to do it? They could. There's a lot of dashes on the SKT team. <laughs> do it. Do it, G2. That's They're not doing it. That's not the... <laughs> that's kind of oh. the... Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to say it's the coward's way out, but uh, the Vyagar would have been a little bit more... So Oriana is, of course, still a very good matchup into the Rise. Uh, it just gives you a little bit more power in the laning phase early on, and it makes it harder for Faker to be able to roam. So it's understandable, because, of course, what you don't want if you're G2 is to allow Faker to just, okay, I'm going to push in a Vagar, and then I'm going to roam top, and I'm going to dive with my Renekton. So I think it's fine. I understand why they did it. But I think that coming into this game, G2's focus will likely be to play through the bot side of the map. I think it's difficult to set up ganks and plays onto the Renekton. So I think that for Wonder, you're just hoping to allow him to survive. Whereas Perks and Mickey can easily find 2v2 kills. And I think they're going to be looking to work with Yankos to try and find those advantages. I agree with that. I also think as far as the tournament meta, SKT has way more of the meta comp. Oh, for sure. The Renekton Rise Kaisa as your carry threat, very proven to work. The Camille Ori combo, not as much. Not to say G2 can't do it, but they are definitely the ones that are forced to reach back a bit more in this Game 3 draft. And here we go, getting ready for Game 3. And my question to both of you is, take the nameplates off. Who do you think came out on top in this draft? I personally think SKT did. Yep. Because I think, I think so that they have way more early game agency. I think the bot lane matchup is very fine for them. And the biggest thing is, I believe that when SKT give Faker agency, that allows them to give Clid agency. So the mid-jungle duo is the most important thing, and I think SKT have the stronger mid-jungle. And now it's going to come down to execution. Here we are, tied one and one. Who will move up to match point? As we get into game three, SK Telecom T1 versus G2 Esports for a spot in the final versus Fun Plus Phoenix. Now, the second that we got into game, Teddy spammed that Cleanse was on Perks. They're recognizing and acknowledge that he is going for more of the defensive summoner spell this time around. He wants to be able to break out of the crowd control. That, To be fair, there's a lot of single target crowd control that comes out from SKT, and it gives you a little bit more lane safety as well. And it's a teleport disadvantage for G2. So the way we saw the first two games play out, was a battle for map pressure that G2 was fighting, and then SKT was fighting to corral them and get team fight priority in specific spots. That could reverse a bit here if Faker commits to split pushing on Rise. Because they have the TP advantage, they have the Realm Warp advantage, and it's gonna be very interesting to track how Caps can roam on a Cleanse Oriana. Now. The only advantage that Caps has in that situation is he is running the unsealed spellbook, which means that he will ah, be able well, to get one teleport. Actually, he has teleport. Well, kind of. he gets one. You're right. So um, it's not something that he's going to have at all points in the game. He has yeah. to pick when he decides to pivot over to that. Um, but you're 100% right, Jack, in that for the majority of this game, Faker and Khan can be generating pressure on a side lane. But I think that with their comp, they shouldn't be too afraid to force team fights either. Their dive is very strong. They have a very solid mid-game spike. And I think that Teddy, on the back of a Leona ultimate, could quite easily one-shot this Orianna if she does not position properly. So I think the big biggest thing SKT has to be careful of is Wonder on this Camille. I think that he's going to be the biggest side lane yeah. threat that will be the hardest for SKT to deal with. And I imagine that they will want to try and shut him down in the early game. What surprises me is Clid is actually doing a top side start. So he's actually yeah. pathing towards bot side, suggesting that he wants to be in a position to answer any early plays made by G2 on the duo of Teddy and Effort. And I love the quick trades that we're seeing on the bottom side for SKT. That's a fast level two though. Top side, Wonder. I want to back off in that trade. And I think it comes down to a larger question of, is SKT playing through their priority, or are they playing through G2's priority, or to prevent it? And the CLID path down towards bottom side would suggest that they're playing to prevent G2's priority. They're saying they use their first two picks on the Zion Nautilus, and then they also pick the Elise early. They very much want to be able to play through this bottom side, and they want to withstand whatever assault SKT can throw out in the solo lanes. And it's difficult, because we saw before the Nico answer coming in for Faker up against the Rise, how it came down to a single ultimate. If you found five people, it would have been a game win for SKT. He could not. And now it's a similar story for Caps. So we see the setup for the gank on the bottom side. 
Remember, Teddy just going to pull back, though. They should be fine as Yankos wants to He's move diving. in. Dive comes in from Khan, though. This is going to be big. Wonder still alive. The flash out. That's going to be first blood. Khan lives. lives. Outplayed on the top side, but now the engage on the bottom. Where are they going to get able to get the CC down? They are. That's the kill response back from G2. That could be something as simple as effort looking top and being like, ooh, good job. And then is just completely caught off guard. There's no reason for effort to actually be sitting up that far when the wave is going to crash anyway. So G2, get one back after Khan gets the solo kill. Khan just seems to be ramping up in this series. In game one, sure, his his Renekton was not that impactful. Game two, his team fight presence was definitely known and he had some pretty great plays in a side lane. Now in game three, already finding a solo kill onto Wonder. And he's just been taking so many tra uh, favorable trades early on. Wonder burns the shield early, which means that when Khan comes for the dive, he's able to just melt through his HP bar. And if it weren't for the triumph, Khan would have lost his life. Just fantastic play on the top side. I thought for certain Khan was dead, but manages to come out on top and Wonder's gonna be miserable in this lane now. The Cole from Khan yeah. is a bit of a reprieve and that it's less of an aggressive item than, say, an early Longsword, but it does mean that he'll be even more threatening in the mid game. As now Perks has been locked out. It's gonna Good be trade. big damage. Cleanse and Flash coming out. Teddy definitely outplaying that one, and Wonder's been caught out again. That's gonna be one more kill. Khan gets yet another top side kill. Wonder's in a really bad spot. Uh, it Super actually, bad. It, it looks like the wave's not freezing. It could actually be oh, way okay. worse. Yeah. I'm not sure if there was a chance for them to freeze that wave or if they pushed it out of choice. I wouldn't think they'd push it out of choice, though, because that could have been the end of the game if the wave was positioned to freeze. Yeah, I, I'm in complete alignment with you, Jack, because I think what they could have done is they could have actually had the wave pushing towards Khan yeah. and then just stopped it. And then Wonder can never approach that wave because already in the 1v1 he's losing and Clid is just pathing around that side of the map. So, so far in this early game, this is exactly what we expected to see from SKT, playing towards the strong side of the map, trying to shut the Camille down so that she gets to uh, that strong side lane point much later in the game. Now we see Yankos in mid lane, boots already completed, looking for a play, but Faker, respecting he has no mana, gonna disengage. Mickey there as well, spotted that one out. There's been a lot of roams mid from Mickey Faker, giving them the respect that they deserve. He backs completely out of mana, and we look back at this one, Wonder, too confident. Already a level deficit, and an easy dash in. Flash for the stun, oh. it doesn't hit the wall. Misplay by Wonder, and it... I'm just trying to look at that wave. With the aggro that was on them, I don't... I don't know if it was freezable. That's a pro view look back, but you can see the reaction from Ocel out there, knowing how big it is to die, teleport back die again and be up against a Renekton in that matchup. And now look at the positioning of Elise. Bot side camps are up for hanging around the top side to avoid any other potential dives. If they oh, can turn it. But Khan's gonna hit level six suit. Oh, actually he's no, a He won't, he won't hit six in time. They can turn it. Shot wall dive. He has Zap's no defenses have come out. Khan slowed down, they're trying to run this one slow. He will manage to hit the Cocoon, even as the dash away comes out, but Khan with so much healing coming in from the Conqueror. Is he gonna be able to escape from this one? Wonder wants to finish off the kill desperately. He will get the shutdown, and hope comes alive for G2. So huge that they get that kill onto Wonder. He's actually back in the game now. That is something that a 2-0 Renekton can't let happen. Clid doesn't stay to play the game through topside, instead trying to help out Bot a little bit. Yes, they get the Mountain Draken, but that play was a must for G2. The response from SKT, very good. Immediately, they're pathing towards bot lane anyway because uh, Clid wanted to clear out his bot side camps. He's able to secure the mountain, but on top of that, they completely zoned Perks and Mickey away from an entire wave of farm because Faker had Pryo in mid, it meant that they could have collapsed as a four-man and Pooks has no summoner spells. So SKT, even with the loss on top side, still generating a lot of pressure on the other side of the map. Clid in the mid lane. Yankos, level five to the level six of Clid. It's a great run by Tremor Sense will spot them out. He can throw a Pricey Girl over the wall if he wants. It pulls him back, they immediately go all in on Baker and Clid is left sitting underground as his mid laner drops. Yeah, the Tremor Sense told them one person was there, which didn't mean Faker immediately thought he needed to flash the Shockwave because he knew he had Clid there as well and probably wanted G2 to fully commit. But great roam by Wonder to be there and make it a 3v2. And it was Wonder that also picked up the kill, which is really important in the context of the top lane matchup because what SKT want to do is mitigate this split pusher, getting into a position where he is outscaled. Now, oh, Yankos with a beautiful cocoon sets up the play onto Khan. It almost looks like he's going to get away, but the last hit does come in through Wonder the moment Khan tries to take that small pivot turn and he finds a kill. Two now is in the back pocket of Wonder. He's working towards getting to a point where he can outduel and outscale Khan in a silent. You can see there's only a 200 gold gap between the two. The top side of the map, 
very much leading in gold for G2. Teddy, though, silently winning on the bottom side. 70, working towards that Mount Immune, and has been having a very good lane phase. Up against Perks' Zaya. We heard from Frost yesterday on cooldown. Considers Perks the best Zaya player at Worlds, best Zaya player in the world, and now has to deal with Teddy, who has been having a fantastic series following that Yasuo game. Yeah, I really want to reinforce that because a lot of the hype and excitement was surrounding Perks coming into the semi-final, but Teddy was like this steady rock that kind of just sat in the back line and very much did his job. And the conversation we were having earlier in the week, chat, was how G2 play very differently around Perks compared to how SKT play around Teddy. But that's not to say they can't play that way around Teddy. And when they do, he is a devastating force to deal with. And for SKT, they haven't needed to so far because he's just been doing so well in the 2v2. But they're playing around him right now. You can see Clid and Faker getting river control with the Rise. This is what everyone does with the Rise pick, and they threaten Perks and Mickey. But interestingly, they actually are trying to roam mid instead. It doesn't look like much is working for this SKT play, but they're going. One more coming in. Trying to box them in, the flash in. The Elise comes up, they should still be able to grab the kill on the Yankos. He's gonna be able to back off. Zenith Blade missing there from Effort. A lot of time wasted for SKT. And a flash from Faker. A, a huge force attempt there by SKT where they actually, they had the opportunity to create bottom lane pressure. They could have had probably two plates for free when they had two people roamed into the jungle, but they tried the switcheroo, the mind game, and it, it completely fails. And now suddenly we go from SKT looking like they're dominating in the solo lanes, winning on the bot side of the map as well, to a very even, very close game once again on the back of a few of those top plays from the side of G2. While SKT have been certainly leading the pace of the game, G2 is now matching them blow for blow. Are we surprised that it's close <laughs> so far? <laughs> the, the funniest thing to me was how Jat was talking about at MSI, whoever got an early game lead won the game, period. Didn't yeah. matter. But this series, the gold difference has always been like 100 yeah. gold once you hit the 15 minute mark because of how yeah. often these teams just trade kills, objectives, everything. But who wins if no one wins the early yeah. game? What <laughs> happens <laughs> then? Uh, we get a great series. <laughs> it's actually the answer. Full trade on the top side. Khan coming out on top though. That Conqueror plus the stain on the Cold Amig makes it very hard for Wonder to win. Now the flash in, he's gonna hit Faker. Yanko's coming in, that's a lot of CC, it's a lot of damage, but they're now gonna need to pull back. They know Faker doesn't have a flash, it's gonna cost a TP though. Flash in, they're gonna kill Yankos. Goes up, there's no camp there. He can't come down, Yankos gets locked up. Faker's gonna grab the kill. So that four-man roam worked <laughs> for the rest of SKT, even though it was G2 who ended up forcing. Strangely enough, Betty, this series we prophesied that it was going to be about mid laners leaving. This game is about <laughs> everyone going mid. Yes, it certainly is. And now Khan has found one that he wants to continue trading. He knows he's stronger at this point in the game. He's forcing him back. But Khan had to commit his TP to that mid lane play. That was the biggest thing that forced Yankos and Mickey to immediately disengage. Hooks now has his eyes on effort and Clid. He's just going to disengage. But now SKT actually have a very solid early game advantage. They now have about a 1k gold lead. A lot of the gold gap exists between the top laner and AD carries, whereas mid is pretty even. Yeah, I think the biggest thing for SKT is the gold on Teddy at this point. Based on the early game, we might have thought top, but based on how many plates he's got, we'd think that. And as Mickey does tag Faker, they don't actually have the full burst combo just with Elise and Nautilus. And good job by Clid to just flash in there for the execute damage and a little bit fortunate that the Raptor camp was down. Otherwise, he would have been able to get away. Ooh, they just get an Inferno. Okay, but it looks like it's gonna be a trade of an objective. Of course, Khan with pressure still on the top side means Clint should be able to walk in and fight for that one. Not ideal to give up the Inferno to this composition. I like that SKT have actually moved their duo into mid lane rather than just doing a full on swap. They know that Khan is still winning in the 1v1 and they keep they want to keep that set up, but they also need Teddy and Effort nearby in the event that G2 try to contest this Herald. So they've sent Faker bot, he has the TP, they can now collapse onto the top lane and they can use this to secure the first tower of the game. G2 need to respond by trying to push in that bot tower as well. And Wonder is out of there. Has learned from the last time he got tower dive, this game is not interested in sticking around. And it looks like for SKT, very clear where they want to put their resources. Jat, you mentioned it earlier, but Teddy is getting everything. Yeah, they're giving him total solo gold on this first turret. But the big question to me will be how does SKT match the rest of the map? Because they should know that G2 is setting up to also try and trade the bot turret and would threaten to dive elsewhere. Wonder. SKT just goes for wonder. A hook shot wall dive will be the F alt out from effort. Teddy continuing to push in. Caps on the way. Wonder could just use the ultimate, but they have to be careful here. Yanko's on the way in nothing. as well. 
Tactical Sweep will not connect onto Teddy. They will be able to clear this one out. But a lot of gold into Teddy's back pocket. Should already have the Q Evolve on the side of the Kai'Sa. And is building towards that Rage Blade and eventually the Supercharger as well. Now, Perks being left in isolation in the bot lane means that he will eventually take this tower down. And SKT shouldn't be able to answer, but they did push him mid. Ooh, teleport coming in from Faker. There's not much that Perks is going to be able to do about this one. He's just going to be able to walk up. Of course, Perks not with a ton of mana. Has the cleanse, which makes him a little bit more comfortable, but can't really actually force a fight, but does have the necessary tools to retreat. I mean, G2 did manage to get a good number of plates off of that. You can see the gold still uh, only 1,000 strong, and SKT a little bit behind on trying to get pressure around this bottom turret. Looks like they're going to rotate in time, though. But Teddy is now here, more along with Clid. Four members of SKT are in position to defend. The Drake is a little way off, so it's not likely that they'll try and force this, yeah. but at the very least, they stop G2 from claiming any kind of map pressure. And if they want, they can even rotate to mid, push that wave in, and start getting a little bit more deep vision, because Khan can also rotate down from the top side. I have to see. You can see eight turret plates to five. Of course, still, as you mentioned, 1k gold lead being held onto for now. Cast of the blue buff should just be able to auto clear out most of these waves. Luden's Echo means he will be a bit more of a threat, but neither team wanting to overforce for an objective. Just very similar to game one, trades across the map. Trade after no trade after <laughs> trade. But G2 do not have an option to trade here on the bottom side. So they will just move in to try to deny the play. Yeah, effort looks scattered to me, though. He's had a few ultimates where his team never would have been able to follow up. He just there, uh, instead of walking through the turret while his team could roam, he actually ruins the blast cone himself and then flashes over. So uh, G2, I think, should, should look to attack this. And it's strange to watch this game, actually, because oftentimes in best of fives, the first game is where we see the jitters and then the team settle coming into games two and three. It feels the opposite here. It feels like games one and two were super great in terms of quality. And this game, there's a little bit of indecision and jitters. It's Khan pushing on the top side against the four members of G2 pushing on the bottom side. They will break this tower. Khan might get a bit of damage down top side. The Herald has done a lot of work there, but Wonders on the way up to respond. We'll be able to keep the tower alive for now. The tactical sweep healing him up. Probably still cannot win the 1v1, but can just clear out the waves. Both top laners with the team at. What I liked about what G2 just did was they actually held one to mid lane so that SKT couldn't be threatening two waves. Mm. This wave is going to come very delayed, which means G2 can answer, and all they had to defend was the top tier two. Because they ended up being able to respond in time, G2 actually keep all of their towers alive, and now SKT is forced to reset. The Dragon will be the next big point of contention. Yeah. Teddy has to make a decision. Does he want to reset now, or does he want to make a play for the bot tower? I agree with the choice to reset. Spend the gold. If the Rage Blade is ready to be completed, finish that one off so that when the Mountain Dragon spawns, you're in a position to fight. Exactly. If we want to forecast beyond just the next 45 seconds of Mountain Drake and think about what happens in 10 or 15 minutes, the second Mountain Drake or the first Mountain Drake for G2 are massively important. A Kaiser with two mountains melts Baron so incredibly quickly. I mean, she doesn't without them, mate. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> what one mountain does something, two mountain is incredible. If G2 gets a mountain, they also get a higher amount of Baron threat, even if their composition isn't necessarily designed for them. Yeah, the, between the Rise and the Kai'Sa, the sustained damage is incredible from the side of SKT. Now, the good news for G2 is that Teddy is still a long way off of fully stacking that tier, only about 450. But it's going to make him even more lethal in the fights to come. And having double evolve pretty early on for SKT is going to make their fights very, very potent. So I really do think G2 trying to force a fight here would be a bad decision. The better choice for them is actually to play for mid-tower. Because of how strong Khan is at this point in the game, with a fully completed Black Cleaver, a 5v5, I really think, would go in SKT's favor. They're, they're going to an pick one anyway. Knockup's going to come out. Clid will be able to make it out. Faker, phase rushing away. The disengage comes through. Yanko's burning his flash for that trading with Clid, and now Wonder's in trouble. Khan knows that he's isolated. Hookshot wall dive out to safety. Stun still connects. Wait a That's minute. a forgiving stun. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't that interaction? He might, might want to go flash for flash. He has ultimate as well if he wants to reset. Yeah. Fine. That's a stun. Big ulti now going to come out trying to cancel a few animations. Hextech ultimatum. Tax sweep to take him away. Khan will get nothing. But keeps his flash. Trading it for Wonder. Well, uh, here. TP. Hook. Shockwave. Blind shockwave. Yo, they're going to get him. Khan locked up. He's trying to get something back. A beautiful pick from G2. And ultimately, G2 knew that they could not fight for the Drake as long as Khan was in a position to TP. The moment Khan realized G2 had used a lot of their engaged tools, largely from Mickey, then they, or Khan knew rather that he could go for that all-in-1v1 where he didn't realize was the positioning of G2 and how they could answer.
And a fantastic 1v1 from Khan, getting the flash basically for nothing in the end, but costing him his life is brutal. Good news is Faker is on the bottom side. He yes. does respond with the tower. SKT hold on to their 1k gold lead, as well as securing the mountain. So SKT is still in a very favorable position. This point in the game, to me, they feel a lot stronger. Teddy has a level advantage over mm. Perks. He has two items completed. The Rod of Ages has started stacking, and Faker is going to be working towards his uh, Archangel staff. He's yep. probably going to have it very soon. And as we mentioned, the Black Cleaver already done on Khan. It's one of those situations where, similar to game one, G2 want to avoid fighting for now. That's not to say they won't want to fight a little bit later, but a lot of the, in my opinion, the biggest win condition is Wonder on a side lane. So they just need mm -hmm. to keep getting resources funneled into him. They need to get more items completed on him. And they need to get him to a point where he can dual Khan to split SKT. And with the way the level three top lane turret dive went, followed up by the return gank from Clid, Wonder should be actually happy in context about his decision where he is right now. And in the larger picture of the game, Faker is probably going to keep applying split push pressure. So I don't think there's a necessity for either team to, to force at this moment. But with double mountain, definitely expect SKT to be more towards the top side. Because if they can get one pick and convert that into the Baron, that's their avenue to victory. Yeah, well, they don't have to force. They can. G2 probably not going to be able to match that in yeah. terms of just raw Baron threat. Once again, Rise plus the Kaisa, some tankier members in both the Renekton and the Rek'Sai. We'd have to see how the Camille vs. Renekton or Camille vs. Rise matchup plays out as we get further, because while the Rise will scale up, we also have the Spear of Shojin to take into account in the back pocket of Khan. G2 just doing what they can to get a bit of vision. The other thing to notice is the level differences. Faker has a level on Caps, Teddy has a level on Perks, and because of how they're playing, this is probably going to keep mounting. Faker is going to free farm in a side lane, whereas Caps is going to be forced to group like you're seeing right now. Teddy is having a lot more resources funneled into him, whereas Perks sitting on a side lane, it's very dangerous for him to do the same thing. So SKT is always kind of one step ahead in the sense of right now in the state of the game, yeah. they just have that initial advantage. Even if it's not that big in the gold, just the stats and the animization and levels they all have makes them that much stronger than G2. And now the inevitable Baron setup. Is SKT are going to do what they can to get mid lane priority. Kicking Khan, it looks like, once again, back out to a side lane, back up to the top side of the map. The rest of SKT grouping, seeing that they already have bot wave pushing in their favor, knowing that Wonder will be forced to respond to that one, means that they have control over the top side, unless G2 are willing to commit a TP to fight for it. Teddy is actually very close to converting into a Muramana from his Man Immune, which would actually give him a fairly substantial power spike. And additionally, it looks like he's going for a bit of AP itemization. Still a lot of hybrid damage in that build, of course, yeah. as the uh, Akathian Rain is physical damage, but has to be respected as we get later and later. Obviously, the item defensive itemization as well will make it very difficult to lock that Kai'Sa down. Yeah, and the vision has actually been traded. You can see Wonder trying to get that push down on the bottom side, and SKT, they can just start this. It is checked by Control Ward, but Yankos, Yankos isn't close. SKT doesn't know that, but they have a chance to burn this down if they really want to. 4K, it's getting lower and lower. 2K, it's gonna drop, they're going to back away. They didn't know where Yankos was. They're hoping for the play, but effort's been locked down. He's so incredibly low, and now the fight's gonna kick off. A perfect Nautilus all to get everything going. A cocoon to follow up. A TP now coming in. Baron will reset, and Mickey will walk away with his life. When SKT watches this back, they are going to be so sad they didn't just finish the Baron because they had it in the bag. What ends up happening, though, as G2 collapses, not only do they kill Effort, they get the mid-priority because the turret killed. Let's just take into account everything that G2 just got off the back of that wow. play. The obvious one is a kill. The next obvious one is a mid-tier one. But the least obvious one is the fact that Wanda is now level 14. He's now close to completing that Trinity Force because while SKT were trying to force this play, and they were very close to securing it, forcing the TP in from Wanda, the indecisiveness here. I think they just wanted to turn and fight. They wanted to use they it, did. but they did not get baited in. Now Wanda, he could be in trouble. Look shot, wall dive. Realm Warp now coming out, but they're going to respond with the TP. They say, you want to make this our arena? We're going to match you. But he will be stunned immediately oh. as he comes out, and that's disastrous for the side of G2. Wonder gets deleted. That's two kills for SKT. They can run straight for the Baron, but Khan, not even in trouble. He's going to manage to make it out. SKT in advantage. And Effort steps up with the perfect Solar Flare on TP. And now Faker is hunting. Yankos doesn't even know from the darkness. The flash out, the cocoon will not connect. Spider form of the Krug's up. He's got to be asking himself, should be able to go up into the air. Oh, oh, the fog. He lost to? vision. But if now Yankos somehow steals this, that flash would be huge. But SKT has all the cards right now. His smite is down. I don't think there's anything that he can do. They're going to go straight towards the Drake and trade. And 
disaster for G2 as SKT find a great collapse on the side lane. They did this in game one but couldn't convert it into anything. This time though, they convert it into Baron. SKT with the punish playstyle coming up huge against G2. And G2, just a consolation prize and that has to hurt because something else we talked about was TP discrepancies. And it's bigger for mid lane than it is for anywhere else because yes, Caps has the spell book, but he burned that TP. That TP is wasted. He will not have access to another one for a very long time. And this isn't the matchup Wonder's been staring at all game. He's been used to fighting up against the Renekt and Faker's Rise, knowing when he can strike Realm Warp straight back in. And look at this timing by effort. The instant he arrives, he is completely stunned. That allows Teddy to fly in as well. Beautiful play by SKT. And G2, a bit too bold. Not giving SKT respect. I mean, I instance. honestly just think it was a lack of map awareness because Wanda should have recognized that he, the enemy was missing. They were in mid lane and then the, the map went dark and he should have shown more res uh, restraint. He ends up getting blown up by Faker, who's now level 15. We've been talking a lot about this experience difference. And SKT is setting themselves up perfectly to get to match point in this series. And let's see what they do with this Baron, because the previous two Barons, they've actually gotten forced to fight onto and not been able to take advantage of it. Trying to find the pick on Effort. That's a huge shockwave. They get the fight kicked off. Effort now has to run for his life, but they've locked in the middle of everything. Faker Again. walking around the wall. Teddy now trying to get something done. G2 trying to fire back. Khan is still alive, but Caps will find the kill. But now Clint into the midst of the fight. Teddy is going massive. Teddy yes. is not enough because Perks is there to find the shutdown. It happens. KT get their first Baron, and G2 find a favorable fight to negate it. Even if SKT had the position there with the Double Mountain and everything, everything they would have needed to take an advantage. They get a bad fight, and G2 take it home. I need to stop saying this team is set up to win the game, because every time I do, a terrible fight seems to happen. But for SKT, they just got caught out of position, and G2's ability to find that pick was monumental. They're still at a gold deficit, but importantly, they buy time. Now we can see SKT setting up for the Siege in mid lane. Um, as we can see in this What's Your Move replay, they're setting up for a dive onto mid. They use a lot of ultimates, but then yeah. the two-man shockwave hits. Everyone on SKT is actually pretty split. The two frontliners die immediately while Clint and Faker aren't doing anything. Then Teddy goes beast mode. And you think this is it, but then Perks with the feathers yep. kills everything. And specifically Wonder came in at the end to get a stun onto Teddy, which stopped his auto attack cadence to be able to get that kill. Definitely some big miscommunication by Faker. We saw in game two, he had the late damage. recall. It didn't end up mattering because Clid stole the Elder Dragon, but he wouldn't have been there for that fight. Faker starts this fight by channeling Realm Warp into the turret to take minions. That says, yo, we're diving. Effort's there to follow up, but it's Faker who ends up calling out that play, and the team pays the price. And that was, for Teddy, an incredibly powerful point in the game. He had just finished three items to the two and a half that Perks mm -hmm. was rocking at the time. That was his fight to win. One more Cathy and Rain probably would have killed both Perks as well as Wonder, but did not get the time. And moments like that are that you look back at. That is the Baron that they failed to burn down earlier, mm -hmm. and this is yet another moment to follow where SKT are going to be hitting themselves. Okay, so we need to kind of take stock of the current map situation, because unsurprisingly <laughs> to anyone, both these teams are in a very even state. But we have to think about the context of the compositions. SKT can split push. Rise, very strong. Level mm -hmm. advantage over Wonder. Khan can't really 1v1 Wonder anymore, but Faker still can, which means SKT still have opportunities to be able to play through the side lane. I feel that SKT's 5v5 is a little bit stronger just because of their ability to engage and how I feel Elise offers very little value in these later game fights. However, mm -hmm. the Shockwave is so important to take into consideration. Caps, even though he's two levels behind Faker, is still very strong. And this could be the biggest swing factor in these fights. So I think this is a game where a big team fight could determine the outcome. Anytime there's an Orion in the game, watch for the Shockwave. Yep. We've seen throughout League of Legends history, many times it was Faker who would land the Shockwave that could turn the game. Now, it would be for Caps to land, as G2 actually have some pressure bottom lane with Faker pushing mid, and they might go. Protocol. Doing a ton of damage to the tower. Khan now 50%. They're just going to break this one down. They're just barreling into the base. Faker wow. just now getting back. How did they just get away with this? Like, SKT were just watching G2 set up full vision control on the bot side. They were pushing the wave in, and they just gave them everything. I gotta say, 
Faker does not look in sync with his team, which is something I almost never say at a world championship. He was pushing top. He didn't even get that turret down. There was a miscommunication about SKT's ability to defend versus Faker's ability to push that top lane quickly, and it was wrong because G2 get that, and then they also just get an uncontested Mountain Drake. And now SKT is using this time to actually reset. Look, they don't have wards. They yeah. cannot gain vision around the Baron, which means G2 get to push out their waves, get a better opportunity to reset. And while SKT will be first out on the map, players like Khan still need to go back to base, still need to restock on their vision, unless they can interrupt some of the G2 members. And these next three minutes are going to be a massive gut check. We haven't had a five-game series yet in the knockout stage. Everything's gone 3-1. The 1-1 breaker has been the game that ends up sending the series into a 3-1 conclusion. This is so big for SKT, who has misstepped with their Baron to refine their footing and come back. And for G2, it's their opportunity to pounce. G2 pushing into Fog of War. Have to be very, very careful. Oh, they protocol found will connect. But SKT didn't want to be found. <laughs> They're splitting up. Teddy on the backside, of course, has the ultimate. Can leap at a moment's notice wherever he needs to go in the fight. Look at the map state. Bot lane is pushing in favor of G2, but it will slowly push back towards SKT. They have a slow push building up. Top wave is actually pushing in favor of SKT, while G2 have mid priority. Given the positioning of SKT right now, G2 is going to make a beeline towards Baron to clear out some of the vision. But look at all these deep walls that are sitting behind. The opportunity for a TP flank from the side of SKT is very real, and they can look for it right now. They may just have to be willing to commit that TP because Faker is not anywhere near the team quite yet. He is running down mid lane as fast as he can, hoping to get in. Good damage coming in from Teddy, though. G2 may just be fishing for the pick. SKT, needs to top lane. SKT looks so out of sync right now, but Khan is set up, and they're trying to find some semblance of order here. It's a split call. They have vision on the top side, but they don't want Khan to push up by himself. They Wonder want to be has ready for the fight. They could just send him, but they're actually sending in bot. They want to yeah. be able to threaten the inhibitor. And this means SKT should just go straight to Baron. And it forces SKT into doing Baron, which perks or rather the rest of G2 would likely be happy with based on what happened last time. SKT go. wasn't willing it. to 50-50. They fight the full 5v5. The combat sums of G2 will be in their favor. Big shockwave set up. They put themselves in the pit. That could be everything. Faker, it will be the guaranteed knockup. Caps moving in, looking for the perfect shockwave. The Baron will go down, but can G2 find the fight? Caps instantly taken out. The cleanse will not be enough. No, Caps alive on the backside, doing what he can. A sliver of life left, yet still keeping his team alive. And Faker and Khan are on the retreat as G2 push in. The hook shot, the wall dive. They will manage to make it out. Khan trying to delete Wonder. They're going to get one back. It's such a close fight. Faker is fearless. He will make the slow retreat. The last man standing with the Baron buff for SKT. SKT may walk away with the Baron, but they lose four members to get it. Only Faker holds on to the buff in what was an incredibly tense fight. And if Faker dies, the game can still end. <laughs> the death timers were low enough there. So, holy crap. We got to recoup what just happened because the game is still even after that. And G2 have not gotten a Baron yet this series. SKT have been flawless in that objective control, but they keep winning fights. And at the end of the day, that's what matters most in this game. So we get to see the fight play out. One that doesn't bother split pushing because he realizes how quickly this is going down. And what a flash from Faker to avoid that lockdown. If he had been rooted, he would have died. Instead, Caps uses his ultimate into the pit, secures an initial kill, and then look at Teddy onto the back line. He is left isolated to the demise of Wonder, while Caps walks away with barely any HP. And Teddy tried to be a hero on the back line, but the focus of Wonder and Perks on the dive bombing Kaisa has been extremely good. And this, this was really tense. If Faker ends up getting stunned there, the game does actually end because of the exposed bottom and hit. But now, one man with Baron. Can SKT make this one count? Wonder actually failed his flash in that final E. If oh. he had stunned Faker, you're right, that could have been all five Barons gone. But because of that failed execution, Faker's able to walk away. He found a bunch of kills, and now we're kind of looking at him at being the primary damage leader. Of course, Kais is not irrelevant in this game, but I feel the Renekton is just a meat shield at this point. And you have to look at it. If they had a few more Barons up, they could split the map like they want to with the power of the Renekton, with the power of this Rise, but with Faker being the only one to hold the Baron buff, SKT will want to group if they need to use that buff. They can put him on a side lane. And obviously anything can happen, but I still feel like Effort is playing a very inconsistent game. He whiffed his ultimate in that last fight, and it is still G2, who seems so much more well-coordinated than SKT. SKT need to pull it together, because the next fight can be the game. Hex Flash coming in. They're just looking to break the base. They managed to land the Whoa. stun on the Effort. He instantly gets half health. The Camille now goes in. The support is gone. Khan is under the backside. Eyes on Cap. Eyes on Perks. The damage sources, but they're threatening. And Teddy is left in, and Cap just gets deleted, but Perks is untouched. It's a trade of carries. Perks, he gets it! He's still alive. Khan wants it, but Teddy 
It's not going to be enough. Perks continues to step forward. He has the E up and available. Teddy has to run for the hills, but G2 do not need to commit for the fight. Teddy can make the play, but it's not worth the risk. If Teddy dies, this is the game over for SKT. He is the last Ooh. bastion for SKT to hold the line against G2, and he will survive. There's still minions coming in mid. How much does G2 want to go for this? It's hard for Teddy to clear the minions. Thunder steps forward. Big oh. damage! One more feather. Teddy running for his life. No flash, no heal, no ult. But once he has to back, back off, off. cooldown, if he they lands Andrick. the Void Seeker try and into the ult, they can turn this around. Teddy can turn this. Teddy can turn this. No! He gets taken out! And just like that, in an instant, the series is defined as G2 move to match point. Without a single Baron buff, G2 is within a game of going to the World Finals. This series has been incredible, but we have to bring attention to some of the things that we saw from SKT. Chat, you've been talking about it throughout this game. The coordination, the alignment just seems to be off. And even though G2 were down in levels, down in items on some of their major carries, they were playing with pressure as a team. And SKT never felt like that they could break into the base or siege control. And it feels like this difference in teamwork is largely the separating factor in this series. Dracos asked us after the draft, who has the better team comp? We thought it was SKT. Both of us had SKT. I think they did have the better team comp. Yep. They had two Mountain Drakes. They had the Baron. They yes. had the advantages. They did not have the teamwork of G2, and that's the thing that pulled it together. They just kept picking effort over and over again. 1-6 on Leona in that game, and the clutch play that G2 needed to pull out to be up in this series is incredible. And we look back at that last team fight, Perks and Teddy, opposite sides of the fight, both doing all the damage they can yes. possibly do. But at the end of the day, Perks found the kills, and Teddy could not kill enough members to stop this push from going through. And if that ult had been up, and if he could leap in and push a single Q, massive damage spell, he might have been able to kill all three, but he could not make it happen when it mattered most. One thing, and then we gotta go to desk. Perks <laughs> was Sorry, I took nine, time. zero, and four at the end of that game. And when you consider we didn't mention his name once, the fact that he was able to pull off a scoreline like that just showcases how